easy assessment. They they kicked our behinds. Yes, they um, did. Starting with me, we all got our behinds kicked. Yes, they did. Let's break it down. On this first one, we see the first of many times where the Kings overhelp, and the person that did it here is Mr. Edwards. Concerned a little bit too much about Tatum. I thought Fox did a good job in trying to stay in front of Tatum right here, and Tatum just caught Edwards a little bit too deep, and he saw Marcus Smart set. I understand that he's not shooting the ball well from beyond the arc, but we all know that Marcus Smart is a very capable three-point shooter when it matters, and he hits a shot, and this gets his confidence going. This one was tough just because I believe Sabonis did the right thing in playing drop coverage since Keegan Murray was getting burned by Jalen Brown all game long. But Jalen Brown knows that if they have good spacing, which they do at this point, right? And De'Aaron Fox does a good job of, of hedging here at Al Horford and he gets back on defense to contest Marcus Smart's shot. I thought that was good defense actually. On this one here, we see just bad perimeter defense, guys beating you off the dribble. And then on top of that, getting the offensive rebound. Like, you got to do a better job if you're Keegan Murray, if you're Trey Lyles. Marcus Mott should not be able to get this shot back up. He missed it. But it's not about the results, it's about the process here. And Mike Brown should be very disappointed. Here we see one of the many blunders from Malik Monk on defense. As we've seen all season long, Marcus Smart attacks in transition. And if we go back just a little bit, Malik Monk gets caught ball watching here. And Mr. Brogdon literally just attacks the glass and he gets the put back. At this point, it's too late. Malik Monk needs to do better. He needs to be aware of where his guy is at at all times, and he just easily gets beat here. I would be very upset if I was Mike Brown. Here we see more overhelping by Malik Monk. I understand that he's trying to cut this off, tag uh, Grant Williams here, but he's a little bit too deep, and at this point, you're at Brogdon's mercy. He already saw the whole play, he processed it, and he just chuckles out to the other side for the easy shot, which he missed. He airballed it. But again, it's not about the result here. It's about the process and trying to get better. He's done this all year long. He's talking, he's talking. I'm glad he tags here, but you can't go in that deep. All you had to do here was literally just hedge here and then run back. But now it gets Trey Lyles trying to get his back because Malik was too deep. He hedged too much and that's what happens. On this one here, we see Sabonis hedge way too hard. He's up on the perimeter, out of position, flat foot here. And this compromises Davion to tag Williams here and almost grab him a little bit, right? And luckily for the Kings, it was a bad pass, but he was wide open. A, a lot of it because the containment was lost up here with Sabonis, he just he should have just hedged right where Keegan is at and then kept his man here, but he didn't, and Jalen Brown makes him pay. But again, luckily, another miss, another air ball from Marcus Smart. But these are the little things that the Kings need to improve on if they're going to have a serious run in the playoffs. Here we see good defense by Edwards, and they got the shot they wanted. If if you're the Kings, like they want Rob to shoot this shot, but if you're Edwards, you can't miss time this rebound. Like you have to finish off the possession. You don't. You're not in a good position. The ball literally goes back uh, to the Celtics, and it's an easy kick out for Marcus Smart that hits another three-point shot. It's disheartening. This is why the Kings just really can't get over the hump defensively all four quarters. Yeah, they've had good moments defensively in the fourth, you know, top 10 defensive rating, but these are the little things that kills them in the first, second, and third quarter. Here in transition, they were playing four on five because Harrison got fouled on one side. They, they didn't call it. And they got lucky that 
Malcolm didn't see Jason Tatum open for a three. He's he's even calling for it. Um, he kicks it back out right to White, and it's an easy pass to Rob Williams. Sabonis fouls him. Right holds him in the stomach. No call. Oh my God! I mean, that, that was clear as day. This is what I was tweeting about when I said the refs at this point for five minutes in the third, and they were letting everything go. Like stuff like this. That's incredibly obvious. Yes, the Kings got some calls as well, guys. And they didn't call that. That's an end one. So bad defense. You got to get back. You have to communicate better. That's just one of those things, man, where he just had a bad night just overall. At this point, I just want to point out what the score was. It was 52-49 with 150 left in the second quarter, right? Guess what happens? The Boston Celtics take the lead and not by one or two points. So it's disappointing when you can't finish out quarters. It's just it's just, it's disheartening, man. Good defense here by Davion Mitchell, but Jason Tatum is just simply too much. He's too strong. He's too physical. He got a technical foul here, and it was well worth it for him because he started getting calls after this. So kudos to Davion, but at the end of the day, better offense will always be good defense. That's just the way it goes. So here we see with three seconds left, a great isolation play for Jason Tatum to go one-on-one -on -one against Edwards. Yeah, Edwards had some moments against him, but this is going to be barbecue chicken every single time, really against anybody if it's one-on-one. -on -one. So he literally reels him in, has his hands down, just goes into him. Easy swipe up for the foul and one. Now the Celtics are up by six going into the half when they were trailing by three with under two minutes. That cannot happen. We'll end it with this play here, which was the one that really infuriated me. And it's TD overplaying Jason Tatum. Like, bro, what are you doing? You can't stay in front of this man. Why are you playing him so tight? You're already out of position. Tatum knows that. He blows by him. He should have led him to Sabonis. Sabonis was out here thinking that there was going to be a high hammer screen by Rob. That doesn't happen, right? Because TD is just out, just overplaying him. Like, why? Like, why are you doing this? Makes no sense. Now you got Sabonis out of position. You got no rim protector. Um... What do you think is going to happen? Obviously, Fox shoulda, coulda, woulda would have been nice to take a charge here. He has enough time. He gets out the way. That's just the type of night it was for the Sacramento Kings. Unfortunately, they're on a two-game losing streak. This is why they should have won against the Utah Jazz and had a 4-0 sweep on the road trip that didn't happen now you're in jeopardy of losing another game on friday hopefully they don't lose because i don't know of many elite teams that lose three games in a row and there's so much optimism for the kings to be this quote-unquote elite team the reality is as i said in the uh, post game show and on instagram the Kings are not on the same level as the Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks, the two top teams in the NBA, in my opinion. The Nuggets are number one in the West, but I still think they're beatable. They're a middle-of-the-pack team defensively. The Celtics are fourth. The Bucks are anywhere from second to three defensively. Defense wins championships. You have to be able to use this film against the Bucks and the Celtics to learn okay it's still march it's still march 22nd that's a good thing hopefully they can learn and use this to their advantage as april is right around the corner and as they finally break the 16 year drought which is the only positive i'm going to leave on on this episode on this film session so let me know what you guys think in the comments below thank you guys so much for all the love and support Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.